So um, it's a really rainy day today here, um, and a rainy day is great for a soldering project. And I'm going to build a Bitcade XL, um, which is a soldering kit for a game console. And I hope that it will help with other soldering projects like building a radio in the future. So let's get started. So right now I have all my parts here um, from the box and I opened the part list on the website. So for every soldering project, it's good to just check all of the parts to make sure you have everything before you start. So I'm just checking that I have all my parts and put it in front of me. Like that. I really love how they have like these stickers on the bags that hold the parts. It makes it really easy to know um, what these parts are. I think on some radio kits, they don't really tell you what the parts are. So I really like this. So here I've got all of my parts and now I can't see it, but um, I've got here, I have the reset cap, reset button, a lot of buttons, nuts and bolts, capacitors, different types of resistors, diodes, Serial flash chip with 8 pin dip. TP4056 charge protection board. An OLED screen. A printed circuit board. The LM317T. A switch. A Pro Micro. Pins. An LED. A buzzer. Spacers button caps, this is part of the case, and a battery. I also have two things that are not listed, so I don't really know what they do yet. Okay, that's it. So I found out what this part is. It's actually a PCB connector where you can connect the battery to the printed circuit board. And it goes in here, like that.
bending it. So I'm checking if this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Ah, it's kind of hard to pin it down. Okay, there we go. Yep, that's uh, about 10 kilo ohms. Yay! Now I'm soldering the LED. Okay, checking the mechanical alignment. I think it's okay. I'm bending the pins on the dip socket, like just the outside um, pins, so it holds in place while I solder it. Yeah. Tin. Okay, it's time to put the dip in the dual inline package. It's doing the same thing as last time where it doesn't go in, so I need to bend a little bit like this. Let's try it again. Okay. Dip. Dip, dip. Okay, I think that's as far as it can go. What do you think? Is it in? No. Hey. No eating it. Can you give her something else to eat, please? Here's the back side. I'll put the cover on. It's going to fit. Mm. All right, let's turn it on and see if it works. It does not turn on. 
Oh wait, it does. Oh. Okay. What am I doing? Assistant. Button test. All right. A. This is A, B. Left, right, up, down. Reset. Select game. Oh, there are lots of games in here. Maybe let's try a racing game. Is it starting? Oh my goodness. Oh, I need to press a button to start. Ah! Oh, I do need to press the forward. That's really cool. Whoa, there's sounds in here. I made multiple mistakes in this build. Um, and when you make a mistake when soldering, sometimes it can mean um, the entire thing is not going to work. Oh, this is fun. So it was pretty stressful when at the beginning I um, installed the pins for the um, the micro in the wrong direction but it's fixed now so I guess that's okay but you can see there's no um, spacing in there like it's intended because I made a mistake there and then I made another mistake installing the resistors uh, in the wrong place one of the resistors so that was kind of scary as well but it's okay now um that was the hardest part i think this is a lot harder than the cw practice um kit the practice oscillator definitely took a lot longer and there are many more pieces in this kit so more things to go wrong um, so I would say it's pretty challenging but it's quite fun I wonder if I would be able to build a game on here that's like a Morse code practice that would be really cool maybe one day